I'm a darkroom trained photographer. That's more or less where I ended up and how I ended up getting my start since it was it was a class that was offered by the high school I went to and it was a lot of fun. We went through, we rolled and developed our own film. Like we loaded the canisters, threw them in the cameras, went out, we took pictures, we brought them back in, we took them out of the canisters, put them into onto a reel, we developed them with little small shakers, and then went through and utilizing an actual dark room, we'd make, well, we'd produce the prints using an enlarger off the negative. And it was a lot of fun. And because you could only carry around, uh, I'd usually overroll mine a little bit and end up with closer to 38 to 42 exposures per roll of film versus, you know, the 24 to 32 most people would end up grabbing. Uh, and even then, that's not a very large amount. I mean, you put a digital, put a SD card in a digital camera these days, and if it doesn't say 999 right off the bat, then you know your card's almost empty already. And even though you can take almost a thousand shots, you know, if it says 700 shots, I mean, you're sitting there like, that is nowhere near enough for the day. And being restricted that much means you take the time to take a look and really think, is this picture worth taking? And you set it up, you do the work, you get that shot, and going through makes the rest of the process a little bit easier step by step, as long as you've got the technical part of it right with the exposure, shutter speed, aperture, all that nonsense. I mean, it wasn't out of focus, that was one of the worst things, was when you thought you got a pristine exposure and then you go back, you take it, get it developed, or rather you develop it, you look at, you know, with a little negative and larger, and you're like, ah, it might be too fuzzy, I'm gonna see what I can do. You get in the dark room and it's useless. You can get a four by three out of it and that might still be pushing it. Uh, but moving forward, that's where I got my start. And it, I don't know, it trained me for a while, but it lo I lost my way. And it made, majorly, once I moved from into a little bit more of the design side of things, and then especially as I transitioned into exclusively digital work. And one of the issues, it's not really an issue, but one of the problems is I slowly, I stopped considering the shots. I stopped paying attention because I knew I could go out and take, you know, 14, 16, 1800 pictures in a day before the battery on my camera died. And that would let me, you know, play the lottery basically on whether or not, whether I would get a really, really good shot or not. And so I would just click, 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 click. Camera I've got now, the what I'm recording on this right now actually is the Canon AO 70D. I think it does six and a half frames per second for five seconds at full resolution raw. And it's like, okay, that's a, I could make a stop motion picture with that if I wanted to. Start making animated GIFs, not GIFs, GIFs for the internet. Anyway. I started, or rather, I completely stopped paying any attention to it, and then I got slapped in the, you know, completely just slapped in the face by reality when I started making these videos, and I realized I actually have to stop and think about the composition. I, I didn't do that for the first few videos. I did my setup right, and I didn't, I was trying to take care of the technical side of things, and as best I could at the time, but I didn't worry about the composition. And that's something that I'm starting to work on a little bit better now, even though I've got a tree partly grow growing out of my head uh, as I move around a little bit. And I don't know, it's, I'm starting to think on that a little bit more and it's making it, I don't want to say easier, but a lot. Thinking through the thought, because it, <clears throat> Videos are more like traditional film photography in that you have to take the time to set up shots. It takes more time to process. It's much more difficult to fix things 
in post and you can run through a picture in Lightroom in you know 30 seconds maybe five minutes if it's a rough one to get a good idea of whether or not it's really usable that might take four hours on worth worth of your time for video if you really dig in and try to make it right but and that's what I'm getting at is the time sink between film photography and even digital video with all of the processes and tools that we can use to streamline and increase our own efficiency in that really ends up turning more into a traditional film aspect and starting to go back and starting to really dig in and think about it in that fashion is helping me line up my shots better. It's starting to show a little bit with you know, it's easier to edit because I'm thinking about the final composition now as I'm shooting. I'm not, oh, I can fix it in post. Oh, I can figure out a way to piece this together because a lot of times you just can't. And it's one of those, I don't know, it's, I'm doing all of the things wrong on video right now as far as talking to you guys. Uh, my cat's staring at me. Now, at the end of the day, this is this video is more me talking through the thoughts than and letting you guys join me. But it's and the time sink is heavy. You know, I'll take it takes you know me five, six, seven hours to edit a five minute video, and that's not including render times, which luckily aren't horrible for me since I started using DaVinci Resolve and the workflow is a little bit better now. Uh, and I just did the uh again. God bless it. Um, looking at the render times, like the edit times, the render times, the upload times, going through making the thumbnail, adding info cards, you know, things like that. It, those are all things that I'm just starting to do and starting to get into again. And each additional step is taking me longer and longer per video, and it's really sinking in the amount of time that this will take to, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to do a video. And it's, it's not a bad thing by any means. I enjoy most aspects of it, the shooting and the shooting, the videos, the editing videos, those are my favorite parts. Adding titles, descriptions, all of that. I'm not great at that, and I'm working on getting better. Thumbnails, I'm using the same rough idea for every one of them right now because it's, to me, it's not worth the, I can make a good enough thumbnail without having to dive really deep in and spending an hour on each one. I can, you know, three, five, three to five minutes done. Good. That's all I need right now going because my videos are neither that long nor at a point where I feel they warrant the additional attention from the thumbnail and going through going forward it's something as I'm getting better at and getting more efficient with and getting faster at I can start implementing a little bit better and then same thing with the tags. I'm starting to utilize some tag explorers, things like that, and not gearing my content for the tags, but making sure that I have all of the tags for my content so that it's as available to you guys as possible and as easy to find as possible. I want to get better about end cards and as I continue to fill content on my channel, that'll end up being a lot easier. And that's why I just did my first end card on the video that I'm uploaded that I just uploaded today. Was now I feel like oh I'm have this I think it was number 15. So YouTube has a at least a really small pile to choose from when I tell it to you know algorithmically choose one to recommend at the end. But yeah, that's that's where I'm sitting at right now. And as always. Son of a biscuit, I never recorded an intro. My opening shtick. I don't have an opening shtick anymore. Drop talking head, Justin. Well, I'm Justin. Glad you're here. 
I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, drop a, drop a like, drop, you know, subscribe, drop a comment down below if you got anything to say. I'm always happy to hear it and do my best to respond in kind. It, ring the notification bell. That was the last thing. That's the last thing. Um, with that, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully soon. Actually, no, I promise you, it will be soon. Promise me to you, it will be soon.